this is a holy holy thing we're doing not just worshiping God but what we're doing is a holy thing it's not just a thing it's set apart it's different it's unusual for us it's every day regular for the world this is an unusual thing and uh, when Jesus presented this idea it sounded almost barbaric you're going to eat me it's a peculiar thing uh, when Paul talked about this in 1 Corinthians he said that we ought not do it like it's just a regular everyday thing but this should be a set apart thing and he also said that we should do it together now as I read it it sounds like the context is a little different it sounds like they were like having a real meal we're eating a little morsel and a little morsel and uh, or a little drink I should say but nonetheless he said we should do this all together and it just occurred to me Actually, I want to back up for a second. I'm sure many of you are probably familiar with C.S. Lewis, and he wrote a book called The Screw Tape Letters. And in The Screw Tape Letters, if you're not familiar, it's a, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the sponsor demon, if you will, the, uh, the sp uh, well, yeah, the apprentice, but I'm talking about the other one. So the grown-up demon is guiding the misguided demon, if you will. And uh, he says to them, our job is to make them concerned about how they feel. But God is more concerned about what they do. And that just really has been on my mind a lot lately. And maybe this morning you're not feeling all fired up about worshiping God. And maybe you're not feeling the presence of God. That doesn't matter because that's a distraction from hell to tell you that something has separated you for some reason. But God's more concerned with what you do. And in fact, later in the book, it talks about when they, us, when we choose to continue to be obedient in the midst of things going the way we think they ought not go, that is a huge threat to hell. So this morning, let's just be obedient. And one of the things we do in obedience is we take communion. And I don't always get goosebumps when we take communion. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But I do it. And we're going to do it this morning. So as I was saying, we should all do this together. And so I was kind of stretching that out on purpose. I didn't plan on saying that, so God fills in. Because I want the ushers to be seated so we can all do this together because I believe that's what God wants it's not really about me and what I want um, I love the way that what just happened there with Dan because it also says it's a time for us to examine ourselves and I, for the longest time I felt like that was the time for me to sit back and reflect on my weekly sins and confess my weekly sins. And there's a confession involved in communion. And I'm not saying that that's not accurate at all, but my confession is Christ. He said, remember me. He didn't say, remember your sin. So my confession, our confession, is in Christ and Christ alone the God of miracles. 
Is he powerful enough? Is the God of miracles powerful enough to take care of our sin problem? I think so. I got to say this. And it's kind of because I'm really good without even trying at uh, examining others. And it's like the latest hot topic, Kanye West. And the church has examined him. And I'm guilty. My first thought when I heard things about Kanye West are, eh, we'll wait and see what happens here. I'm not so sure. And then it occurred to me that Paul started preaching the gospel. And the church says, I don't know about that guy. We don't want him around. But you know who was confident in him all along? Jesus. Jesus was confident in Paul when we weren't. Jesus is confident in Kanye when we're not. Jesus is confident in his work when we're not sure what he's doing. And so even though some of this is kind of mysterious and we're literally eating flour and whatever it, make, whatever it takes to make up the bread and grape juice, we're, there's a mystery going on here where we're eating the body and drinking the blood of Christ. And Jesus said, Paul said, if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. That is such a huge line in this. If I would take the time to judge me, then he won't. Maybe I should stop taking so much time at judging everybody else and invest some of my time in focusing on how I can grow in character and Christ-likeness. And I think we all do that to some extent, but I think I know that I can do it more. So most of you guys know that um, most of everybody knows me, I guess. Most of you, I'm sure, know that what's been happening with my son. And he's got a blood-borne disease. And this blood-borne disease takes some pretty powerful medicines. And at some points, it takes a transfusion. And the transfusion is some other blood that comes in and feeds his body. And the disease is fighting for its life. But the new blood is so much more powerful. Jesus said, this is my blood given for the remission. Come on, man. And remission, as I'm talking about it, means when a disease gets beat down. But the remission that Jesus talks about, which Nick highlighted a few weeks ago when he talked about, communion is it's removed and our blood born disease that we got from Adam is sin and it's fighting for its life but we're about to partake in the blood that cleanses that has already won the fight This is an incredible thing. The God of miracles has accomplished the impossible. That what was definite for you and for me, death. The one who put death in its place. What was the next line in that song? I forgot it. Life is flowing through my veins. Abby asked this morning if I was prepared, and I said vaguely. Because I've learned that my notes are not relevant. God has bigger plans for us. 
So let us not forget that it was on the night that Jesus was betrayed. And it, this wasn't a surprise to him. He knew this was coming. That he decided to take the bread. And he decided to say, this is my body. And then he decided to break it. He willingly did this for you and for me in the midst of my need of mercy. So let's give thanks to God for his mercy as we partake of the body of Christ, which we use as unleavened bread. Side note, the leaven makes the bread rise. So the bread we use is humble. So when we partake of humility, hopefully it infects our body. And now let's now take the cup. He said, this is, Jesus' words is, this is the covenant. This cup is the covenant. At least that's what it says in my Bible. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the life that you gave us to flow through our veins. And now we take it in your name. Well, Father, I just pray that um, as we have been obedient to your word, as we have done what you told us to do in spite of how we may or may not feel about it, we pray that your work would not be done in vain, that your, what you've began in us would be finished. And God, we long to live with you forever in your kingdom. And it always makes me wonder, when does forever begin? May you be with us now, today and forevermore.